circumference of milk and honey. God has planned it from the beginning. He has ordained it to touch lives. And I want you to know it because it is God's plan and purpose to put an end to poverty and affliction, to put an end to misfortune in your life. The reason the problem that brought you here or the problem that has littered your life, all of them shall be wiped off even tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Many times people of God will be looking but have been praying, but have been seeking the face of the Lord. I've been doing this but I've not seen any results. I want you to know that God decides when and where he wants to give miracles. It is not the pastor that determines or decide when miracle happens in the service. But it is God that determines it. Scriptures, you go through the scripture, you see the, the word of God say, God confirming the words as he will. Many times it is God that will confirm everything he wants to do. So, he will know it's God that's going to do it. Let us look up unto him. As many as are in this conference, I want you to look unto him because when you do not expect, he will do it. I say when you are not expecting, the Lord will do it. In the mighty name of Jesus. Now let's go to the book of Acts. What the Lord spoke to me that I want to do in this conference is a miracle that we shut up the enemies. The Lord wants to do in this conference a miracle that we define your, that we redefine your ministry and your family. People will say, but we have known them before, but they have been no. People will know that it is a new you. So I want you to look up unto the Lord. Don't look up unto man. The book of Acts, open Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16 for me, we should have read from verse 16. But we will not start to read for me from verse 19. Acts 16 from verse 19. saw that the hope of their gains was gone. They caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the, unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrates saying, These men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison, and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed, and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep, and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword, and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Then he called for a light, and sprang in, and came trembling, and fell down before Paul and Silas. Thank you very much. We must realize something. And that is the fact that God decides when to intervene in every any matter in life. What you must do is know the heartbeat of God to seek Him and to praise Him in any situation you are. In this particular case, Paul and Silas, they were on errand doing the assignment 
assignment God has given to them. They got to a city and they met a group of people. They had a young girl who had who was possessed by the spirit of divination, by the evil spirit. So this guy goes about. We see different people. You fall with your husband today. Why did you do that? That place you are planning to go. Don't go there. And which was true. So this guy was bringing money to this group of, of people. They were using this guy to make merchandise because it was an evil spirit that was actually upon the girl. And when Paul and Silas, when they got there, the Bible says this guy saw them and shouted, these are the servants of the Most High God, which is a good thing to do because they were servants of the Most High God. But every day that they were going, this guy will be going, saying different things. Maybe he will tell them they ate rice before they came this, this, this evening. Oh, something happened when you were coming. The horse you were supposed to use, something happened to it. And Paul saw that it was a distraction. It was a distraction to the gospel. Just like these days, many days, some people don't go. When they go to church, they are not going to meet Jesus. They are not going to have an encounter with Jesus. They are going for somebody to prophesy to them. For somebody to see vision to them. For somebody to say, this is it. That is what Paul did not like. That is what grieved the Holy Spirit. Inside Paul, he said, what is this? This is not the Spirit of God. And the Bible says, and Paul spoke and cast out that demon from that girl. And when he cast out the demon, that girl could not prophesy for people again. He could not see visions for people. So our masters, those who employed her, they felt very bad. What happened? Why should you do this? And that's how they captured, they arrested Paul and Silas, and they lied against them. And that was how Paul and Silas were thrown into the prison. You could imagine what was happening to Paul and Silas. He, why we should have left this girl alone. We should have allowed that spirit to be prophesied, to be seen vision. We will just preach the gospel and we leave them. If they had done that, they are allowing the evil spirit to cast spell upon that city and upon the people. Paul and Silas, they were raised to liberate men and women from every manipulation of darkness. And that is why today, it doesn't matter what you have been passing through. It doesn't matter the manipulation of the powers of darkness that has affected you, affected your business, affected your children, affected your family. Many times you look at your children. Ah, the Bible says, the, me and the children you have given unto me, we are for signs and wonders. But what I'm seeing in the life of these children is no like signs and wonders. It's the manipulation of the powers of darkness. And so you need to take authority over it. Paul and Silas took authority over it and they landed themselves in the prison. Do you know what? They did not blame themselves. Brothers and sisters, have you been serving God? Have you been doing His work? You are committed to the service of God. You are committed to proclaiming to the name of the Lord. In your office, you are committed to standing by righteousness. You are committed to telling people they must be saved. This has landed you in trouble. Don't regret your action, brother. Don't regret your action, sister. It has landed you in your trouble, but who will help me? I thought this poor brother will help me. That general manager, they say he's a brother. And look and behold, the brother couldn't help you. I want you to know that the one who has given you assignment to be a witness unto him, unto the uttermost part of the world, he will rise on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says at midnight, when nobody was there, Paul and Silas, they were kept in the inner, inner prison court. They were kept there and they were chained. They said, no, you must not escape. They did not bother about it. They just re 
remember the name of the Lord their God. They just remember their God has not changed. They just remember that all power in heaven and on earth belong to the Lord. And the Bible says they sang praises. They prayed and sang praises. I imagine the two of them holding their hands together. They were not expecting anything to happen. They just felt that well, we have done the assignment for which we have been called. We have no apology over it. We have done the calling. The calling that God gave unto us as singers, as instrumentalists, as technical crew, as ushers, as children department. We have no apology over it. And while they were there, they prayed, Holy Spirit, have your way, Holy Spirit. Intervene, Holy Spirit. Grant us the strength to bear the shame of the, all the punishment they will give us. They thought they were going to stay there long. And after they have prayed, they just started singing. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, amen. I love Jesus who died for me and rose again. Praise God. Eh? They were singing praises. They were worshiping the Lord. They were blessing the Lord. They saw the presence of God. They were lost in the presence. Brother, I want you to change. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have waited upon the Lord. You and your family change to the channel of praises. They were praising God. They were praising God. They were not expecting anything. Don't forget God does miracles and wonders according to his will. When he plans it, when he wants it. And the Lord has spoken to me that he wants to do signs and wonders in your life in this conference. All those listening to this telecast, to this broadcast, I want you to know God is said to give you a miracle. God is said to give you a blessing. God is said to turn situations around. Just engage the channel of praises. Begin to worship the Lord. And the Bible says, as they were praising the Lord, suddenly the prison doors opened. Hmm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. What was the significance of the prisoners that heard them? It was the fact that they were not doing silent prayer. Hello, church. Some of us, yeah, we are in our... In this house, oh, the landlord is coming. Let's just pray silently. You know he's a no court man. No! Stop doing that! They sound praises. They worship the Lord. And the prisoners heard them. And when God saw that these people were not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation, they were not ashamed. The Bible says, suddenly, suddenly, something happened. Verse 26, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaking. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loose. Suddenly, the prison doors opened. Suddenly, your admission comes through. Suddenly, your scholarship to study abroad enters it. Suddenly, ah, I remember one of our daughters here that graduated and she had desired to be a pilot. One of her daughters said she had desired to be a pilot. But the parent told her, we don't have money for that. That did not stop her faith in the ability of the supernatural God. 
God that is able to go to where the treasure is hidden and command the custodian to release it. This our daughter is almost rounding up. Being paid for by government of our state, a government a state that they were not going there, at least as far as I know, because these are the things the family I know. They were not used to, let's go to the government office. Let's go to the government office. But this guy got scholarship that covers about three years. Suddenly, suddenly, heaven opened for a miracle. And the next person for miracle is here. If you believe you are the next person, shout a winning name. Amen. Suddenly, God did it. Suddenly, the prison doors open. Beloved, you have prayed enough. You have fasted enough. You have cried enough. Nothing is happening. <laughs> Can God fail? My God will never fail. Can Jesus fail? Jesus will never fail. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Can God fail? My God will never fail. Can God fail, church? No. They sound praises. And all the prison. Initially, there was an earthquake. How they say, why was there an earthquake? There was an earthquake because the people that came to join them in the praises in the prison, they were too many. Ah, somebody there. The Bible didn't say some people came. Yes, they were not human beings. They were the angels that came down. Anytime you are singing praises, anytime you are worshiping God, the angels in heaven, they begin to look at you. What is the work of the angels in heaven? What's their work in heaven? To sing praises. And the movement, you begin to sing praises. You begin to rejoice. What you have done is, you, you establish a branch of heaven in your home. And once there is a branch of heaven in your home, the angels say, ah, that is our plan. Let us go there and go and praise God. So the angels visited that prison, that room, the old premises. And you know the angels, though they were not seen, but they carried weight. They were so many. And the Bible says, the foundation shook. Why did the foundation shake? The angels were so many. In that prison room, the weight was more than the design parameter of the prison, and therefore the prison shook because the prison was carrying the number of beings that were more than it was designed for, and that was why there was an earthquake and the prison doors boom sprang open. You have been locked up in despair. You have been locked up in misfortune, in delay. You have been locked up in a life of storytelling. Every time you see you, you must tell story. And hey, this one, that one, there is no evidence of visitation. There is nothing you can point out that you can say, this is what the Lord has done. I decree to you this evening, from this moment and forth, you will begin to give testimony of blessings, of breakthrough, of abundance of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Because suddenly, the Lord will do it. Suddenly, He will visit you. Suddenly, abundance will come your way. We must learn to wait on God. Somebody say, hey, but I've been waiting on God. And they say, but sometimes, miracles don't happen all the time. That is correct. Let's see the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 2. 
Hebrews chapter 2, we read verses 3 and 4. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him? God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost, according to his own will. Thank you very much. How shall we escape it? Because we have heard the word. The gospel has been preached to us. The witnesses have told us what God did while they were there. And he goes further to say, and God also bearing witness, both with signs and wonders, and with diverse miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost. According to what, church? According to what, church? His own will. Not even the will of the pastor. Left to me, my will is that any service we have, the moment people enter into this place, they say, yes, I can see. Hey, God has blessed me. Miracles begin to happen. That's what I want. Everybody gets every miracle. A miracle every day. For God gives the miracle according to his will. So therefore, when you have come to the Lord, wait for him. Hello, church. What did I say? When you have come to the Lord, wait for him. You know the story of the three Hebrew boys? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said they will not bow. They will not bow to the image of the king of Nebuchadnezzar. And yet they didn't bow. We know our God will save us. Our God will deliver us. And in their mind, they feel when they are just tying us to throw us. Power like Samson. They will not be able to tie us. But did they tie them? They tie them. They tie them. Somebody might be thinking, eh, eh, because I know God will deliver these people. As they are carrying them, before they throw them into the fire, as they throw them like this, they will be so heavy. Nobody will be able to carry them. But that is not the will of God. That is the wish of man. They tied them and they threw them into the burning, fiery furnace. You know the story. When they entered the burning fairy furnace, God wanted to prove, you know, He didn't want people to say that fire was not hot enough. The Bible recorded that the people carried these three Hebrew boys to throw into the fire. The heat killed those men, they died. But when the men entered into the fire, the fourth man appeared suddenly. Oh, the Son of God is appearing suddenly to somebody here. You know what your business is passing through. You know what your marriage is passing through. You know what your children are passing through. I declare unto you, suddenly the Savior will appear in the mighty name of Jesus. You must just trust and wait for him. Many times people don't want to wait for the Lord. And let God do it. We are too hasty. We are too hasty. And let it, let it be like this. Let it be like that. And it's still the same thing about healing. God wants to heal you. You have believed God, but he's not going. And they say there's one spiritual man. He's also church. Shall let me just go. At least I'll be healed. Many of those spiritual places, they have some underlying demonic arrangement, agreement, and they enslave many people. Especially these days, some pastors, ah, your church is not growing. There is a, there is a man of God, he's an elder in the faith, in the body of Christ. You see all these people, they don't want to come under godly leadership, under godly direction. They want to feel they are free. Hey, he's in the body of Christ. I can do anything. You are wrong. Otherwise, the Lord will not establish the church. The church has been given power as a guide in the principle, in the, in, in the patterns that is godly that we should follow. 
let us watch it. Many people have been deceived. They will say there is nothing wrong there, but a lot is wrong there. Let us wait on the Lord. Do not take shortcuts. What did I say, church? Do not take shortcuts. If you take shortcuts, you can cut your life and destiny short. If you take shortcuts, you can cut your life and destiny short. Do not take shortcuts. Wait upon the Lord. Wait for him to act for you. Wait for him to give you miracle. You are looking for the fruit of the womb. You are looking for a husband. You are looking for a wife. Do not take short cause so that you don't cut short your destiny. You all know the story of Gehazi. Gehazi wanted blessings. Gehazi has stayed with his mother for quite some time. They have been together. They have been staying together. He has been enduring with, with Elisha. He has been enduring. He has been enduring. But do you know what? At a time, he said that Elisha should have taken the blessings, the riches, the clothing that Naaman the leprous man brought. And look and behold, Elisha rejected it. How can this man reject we have been managing, managing. When Naaman had gone, what did Gehazi do? He took a short cord to go and collect what God has ordained should not be collected. What happened to Gehazi? He became a leper. The leprosy that left Naaman came unto him. Why? He was taking a cut short, short cut. If you take a short cut, you can cut short your destiny. You can cut short your ministry. You can cut short your life. Do not take the short cut. Wait upon the Lord. He will do the miracle according to his will. Many so-called men of God, God started well with them. God started well with them. Some people you are working in company, God started well with you because you honor the Lord. You are going for him. You are pleasing him. But as you were rising, it was getting tough and tough and you are not able to hold on to God and pray and wait upon him again. So you were, you were cajoled into fraternities. You were cajoled into making charm. Some so-called pastors have gone to places that they were given some special catchy, some special ointment, some special water to wash their face. Some even go into immorality with the goddess of water, with the goddess of various places. They commit immorality with them. And after that, they discover when they say, receive, people will fall and be rolling and they are so happy. They've taken a short cut. Anyone that takes the cut, short cut, we have his life cut short. But when you wait upon the law, suddenly the law will arise. And I know God is arising for somebody in the mighty name of Jesus. God delays some time. Why is he delaying? Many times. The delay you're experiencing is to show the glory of God. And maybe I've not been praying enough. No, it's not because you are not praying enough. I pray for my children. This one, maybe I didn't fast enough. You have fasted. How many times did the disciples of Jesus fast when he was around? We will fast. But when you have done the will of God, by like the book of Hebrews 10, 35, 36, 37, it says, After you have done the will of God, you have need of patience so that you can what? Obtain the promise. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Yeah, Hebrews 10, 35, yes. Cast not away. You're therefore, your confidence. Yes. 
Yes. Which had great recompense of reward. Yes. For ye have need of patience. For ye have need of patience. Church, tell somebody you need patience. You need patience. I didn't hear you. Tell your neighbor you need patience. Yes, go on reading. That after ye have done the will so of God. So that after you have done the will of God. Ye might receive the promise. Thank you very much. Sister Grace, you have need of patience. Brother David, you have need of patience. Sister Neka, you have need of patience. Everyone has need of patience. So that the Lord will arise in his glory and honor you. When he honors you at his own time, nobody can terminate that honor. Your father, your mother, they cannot terminate it. Your uncles, your aunties, they cannot terminate it. Because it is your set time. Hallelujah. Did somebody hear what I said? It is your set time. Wait for the Lord. Because he will not tarry, he will come quickly. Wait for the promise. Continue to praise God. That's why sometimes when we are rounding off service, we just want to praise God. Let us just celebrate him. Let us just praise him. Wait for his promise. This conference is day one. I want you to know those things you have been asking the Lord. Those things that you have been praying for. You will not go empty. Oh. Hello, church. It's like you people didn't hear me. I said you shall not go empty. You will go with your miracle. Wait upon the Lord. For ye have need of patience. So that after you have done the will of God, you can obtain what? The promise. The covenant. Look at Father Abraham. God called him out at the age of 75 from his father's house. And the Lord said, I will make you a father of many nations. He was already an old man at 75 years. He already had wife for many, many years. The wife had no child. The Lord now said, I will make you a father of many nations. And he was waiting the Lord said, follow me. And he was following the Lord. He was going. And he continued following the Lord for 24 years. Nothing happened. He made a mistake. Slept with the housemaid. When the housemaid did, the Lord said, that is not the covenant child. The covenant child is on the way. There is a miracle on your way. There is a miracle on your way. There is a miracle on your way. Hey, there is a miracle coming to you. There is a miracle even this week. There is a miracle very soon. There is a miracle on your way. There is a miracle on your way. If the Lord has said it, he will do it. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. From verse 9 to 15. And they said, yes, go on. And they said unto him. They said unto him. Where is Sarah thy wife? Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, hmm. Behold in the tent. Hmm. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time oh, of the life. Then this was, this was Abraham. That has been waiting for years. He had been waiting for years. Abraham, this time was more than 99. Because in chapter 17, when the Lord said, Walk before me and be thou perfect, he was 99 years old. 24 years after leaving his father's land. But then suddenly, some men visited him. And then he realized. It was God himself that visited. Go on reading. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee. I will thee certainly return unto thee. According to the time according of life. According to the time of life. And lo, hey. Sarah thy wife shall have a son. Oh yes. And Sarah heard it in the tent door. Sarah heard it. In the tent door which was behind him. Mm -hmm. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah.
Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a shorty bear a son, which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Mm. At the time appointed, I will return oh, unto yes. thee, oh, yes. according to the time of life. Oh, yes. And Sarah shall have a son. Thank you very much. Go to chapter 21. Chapter 21, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord visited Sarah and as he has said. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Oh yes, oh yes. For Sarah conceived hey, hey. and bore Abraham a son in his old age, mm -hmm. at the set time of which God had spoken to Thank him. Thank you very much. And the Lord visited Sarah as he has said. Sarah was about 90 years old. She had entered menopause more than 40 years. But the word of God over your life shall not go unfulfilled. It shall not go without being fulfilled. The Bible says when the angel of the Lord visited Abraham and after they have eaten pepper soup, it was actually the Lord and two angels. But they came as man. They visited Abraham. Abraham recognized their presence and saw ah, something special. Begged them to stay with him. And as Sarah prepared pepper soup, they killed, they go, they made it, roasted it, prepared it. And after God and the angels ate pepper soup, I can see why my wife likes a lot of pepper soup and suya. Because God also loved it. After they finished eating, as they were going, because they were heading to Sodom and Gomorrah, to go and answer the call of the land. Then the Lord stayed back and talked with Abraham. And while they were talking, he said, Look, Abraham, my friend, I will certainly visit your wife, Sarah, according to the time of life. According to my word. That's what we read in that verse 10 of chapter of chapter 18 and he said I will certainly return up to thee according to the time of life lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son and Sarah heard it and laughed beloved heaven shall visit you you are looking for fruit of the womb you are trusting God to get married you are trusting God for breakthrough in your business you are trusting God for the hand of God over your life. I decree to you, as many under the sound of my voice, you will be visited by God in the name of Jesus. And when God visits you, everything he says unto you, he will do it. In, verse, in chapter 21, oh, I love that scripture. And the Bible says, and the Lord visited Sarah. As he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. The word you are receiving this evening, the word of milk and honey that's passing, being passed to you today, I decree as it has been spoken unto you, you will receive it in the name of Jesus. People have said, He's going to Christ the rock. He's going to this place. He's always praying. You don't know you have to do something else. They quote or a word that is not the scripture to you. They say, heaven helps those who help themselves. It's not scriptural. It's not in the Bible. They quote it for you. And you do the same God. You see now, they say, I need to, I need to help myself. Wait on the Lord. Because you will be visited as God has promised. And you will have your baby. You will have your job. You will have your breakthrough. You will have your increase in the mighty name of Jesus. Is there anything impossible for God to do? There is nothing possible for him to do. I want you to look at 
how God has ministered to you before now. Hmm. There was a couple, they got married in 1998. About three years after we got married. Me and my wife. They got married in 1998. Young couple, they knew themselves from campus. Lovely, lovely couple, serving the Lord, vibrant for the Lord. The church they were attending, the pastor, they passed through the process and they were married. Everybody rejoiced. This is a life story. It's life. It's something that happened. I even have their video. I posted it on Facebook before. And of course, year one, year two, year three, year five, year six, nothing. So they started featuring G3. So they decided, okay, at least they said they, there is the IVF whereby they can do sperm insemination into of the husband's sperm, they inseminate into the woman and all that. They did it. I think they did it up to about four times. That is very painful and very, very expensive. Each one that they did failed. I think by that time they have stayed up to about 12, 12 to 15 years. That was when they started it. So by the time they are staying up to about 14, 15 years, they were tired. They spent their money. Of course, the woman, every time we cry ourselves out, we cry, God, have we committed sin? Did it we do this? Did we not do that? What did we do? They had now 15 years of marriage. But they decided at this time, God, even if you don't give us children, we'll serve you. I think they were planning to go and adopt a child. I mean, let's give hope to some hopeless children. I mean, which is good. The, she was going to judge the husband. They were trusting God. They were strong workers in the church. And she started having malaria, of course, was treating in and all that. That was around their 18th to 19th year treating malaria one day like that she went to treat malaria <laughs> and the doctor said you said you've used what's on bro hey i use this malaria thing ah, it's too strong it's not good ah, but this malaria is not going it's because you don't have malaria ah, what do you mean i don't have malaria look at the way you are carrying a child ah, ah. but i hope it will not be a miscarriage again Went and to spoke to the husband. Eh? Let us begin to thank God. Let us, they started thanking God. The lady delivered 2018 a baby girl. 18 makes it 20 years of marriage. Suddenly, God did it. Suddenly. I'm talking of somebody, I have the video, I posted it on my Facebook before, some time ago. Young couple, suddenly, God did it. I think the lady should have delivered the second one now. Let, let's hope that that one will be triplets. So that after that, they say, thought, these are Ebenezer, Lord, no more. But the Lord changed their story. Just like somebody, some people here tonight, Heaven is about to change your story for good in the mighty name of Jesus. Wait upon the Lord. Your delay is to give God glory. I have been delayed. It is for the glory of God to show. What did I say, church? It's for the glory of God to show. And His glory will show in your matter. This is milk and honey conference. Why did God say the children of Israel should go and take? milk and honey. Why should they go to a land of milk and honey? Because God wants to wipe, wanted to wipe away sorrow from their life. And so in this conference, sorrow and, and rejection, sorrow and, and, and cry and money shall be wiped out the faces of men and women in the mighty name of Jesus. Because, because suddenly God will do it. When you least expected. You know the story in the book of John chapter 9. The Bible says this man was born blind. The man was born blind. 
And when he was born blind, the disciples were asking Jesus, Who sinned? Is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? What did Jesus say? Jesus said, The parents of this man didn't sin. This man did not sin. But so that the glory of God may be made manifest. Brethren, the delay you are having is there because God wants to manifest his glory. He's there. You have been delayed in your marriage. You have been delayed in blessing. Sometimes you say, but I graduated 10 years ago. But this will happen 7 years ago. But I did it 15 years ago. What is happening? Oh, it's for the glory of God to manifest. Why will somebody say, this man was born blind? I mean, that is unfair. Why should God ordain him to be like that? Only to show his glory. God could show his glory anytime. Yes, he's the potter. We are the clay. He decides what he wants to do with us. That delay, we end in praise in your life. I didn't hear that. I said that delay in your life, we end in praise in the mighty name of Jesus. That delay, that crying, that weeping, every night you are weeping. Hey, the Bible says weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. You are entering to your morning now. I say you are entering to your morning now. You are entering to a new dawn now. You are entering to a place of honor now. You are entering to a place of milk and honey in the name of Jesus. Let's stand up to pray. Every new shabbat, every tongue confess, He is Lord, He is Lord. Every new shabbat, every tongue confess, He is Lord, He is Lord. Every knee, every knee, Shabbat, every tongue confess, is Lord, 
Morris Kenema, a Mambo Mamboma, a Morris Kuristo Jerry's Kenimo, a Mamma 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 Mamma. I see God moving in His power. I see God moving in His glory, touching men and women. Hey, wiping away sorrow. He's wiping away the sorrow. He's wiping away the cry. He's bringing abundance your way. It is your set time. It is your set time. In the name of Jesus. Is somebody speaking to the Lord? Is somebody speaking to the Lord? Is somebody speaking to the Lord? The hand of the Lord is released over your family. Is released over your business. Is released over your life. Holy Spirit, you are touching men and women. Jesus. 
the Lord. Enter into the rest of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. Lord, I want to pray for as many as are sick, those watching from home. Place your hand wherever you are sick. Those in the sanctuary, place your hand wherever you are sick. Father, I decree right now, every infirmity, every pain, every discomfort in their bodies, I command this, get out in the name of Jesus. In any way that they have discomfort, is it in their business? Is it in their marriage? Is it in their body? Is it over their children? Anything that is contrary to divine testimony, I stop it in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Jesus was wounded for your transgressions. He was bruised for your iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon him. And by his stripes, you are healed. I declare by his stripes, you are healed. By his stripes, you are healed. You are made whole. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Beloved, dearly beloved, those watching us on the Facebook, we thank God because God has touched you. We want you to know suddenly a miracle is coming to you. I would like you to meet us again tomorrow from 5.15 p.m. The transmission will start. And then there will be no gathering on Saturday. But we meet on Sunday. Transmission starts by 9 a.m. The Lord has done you a miracle. You are next online for testimony. God bless you.